Okay, I'm back with you. This is session number three of expert sessions on eyebrows and skin. So this session is about getting the biggest bang for your buck. I've, I've told you this in one of the other sessions earlier that I'm not a pro yet, hopefully sometime. Uh, so I still have to look at my notes a little bit so you get to see my eyeshadow. You might have already seen that on the first session if you watched it. But um, I'm gonna focus on eyebrows because I've found that I have a lot to say and 15 minutes goes really fast. So I'm gonna try to keep these to 10 to 15 minutes. I'm Angela sometimes known as Angela Byrne, Angela Byrne Castagnola, Angela Castagnola. I usually work out of a studio in Fremont or a studio in West Seattle. I have seen clients all across the country doing eyebrow shaping and styling for them as well as skincare and lots of other things that we will talk about later on in future sessions. For now, we are focusing on eyebrows and skin because you guys are at home alone and so am I. I wish I were with you. So I want to reach out to my clients and to anyone else who's interested in watching and say, I'm here for you. <laughs> okay, so these are biggest bang for your buck and what to watch out for. So basically, this is an expert session. I'm the expert. Um, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that. But you know, a little disclaimer is that I have opinions and so you might have a different opinion or someone else who's an expert might have a different opinion. I think you're smart enough to figure that out. So I, I kind of think disclaimers are a little bit dumb most of the time and a little bit too legalese-ish. But um, just keep in mind, these are my opinions and feel free to reach out to me, AngelaBurn.com, or if you've got the hookup and you've got my own uh, business sell or email or you use Facebook and want to me message me, uh, you can always ask questions if you have any and then I will try to answer them. All right, so for eyebrows, the um, I'm going to tell you um, methods of taking care of your eyebrows or services you can get for your eyebrows. What's the upside and what are the potential pitfalls or challenges? So let's start with brow shaping. Okay, biggest bang for your buck if you've got a good brow stylist or if you happen to be super talented because I will tell you that that's about only 5% of people but more power to you if you are. It's not that you can't learn but um, brow styling is an art not just you know not really a science. I guess it's kind of a science for some people. Maybe Anastasia felt like it was a science when she created the templates. Um, go girl. I don't use them, but I'm happy for her. So brow shaping. If you've got the wrong shape, that's a pitfall, right? So if you've got the wrong shape that overwhelms your face or is too, um, too full or has little, um, what do I want to say, little divots in the shape, then that can distract people from looking at you and from seeing your beautiful face, from seeing your beautiful self. So good eyebrows and a good eyebrow shape is what, is what I would say the difference between wow and uh. Like it's a head turner versus, oh, that looks nice. Okay, so beautiful shape, huge bang for your buck. So if you can find a really good brow stylist, um, that's going to be the biggest bang for your buck is the shape of your eyebrow. Now, the pitfalls are that you might take a while to find the um, person who can work with your shape really well. I will tell you that a very, um, that a good brow artist can work with all types of eyebrows and um, they usually see all types of eyebrows. That means um, young people, older people, gray eyebrows, eyebrows that are curly, eyebrows that have really interesting hair growth patterns, eyebrows that are super dense and thick, eyebrows that all of them grow really long and curly. And a great eyebrow artist can uh, quaff and use and tame and make those eyebrows, any of them, uh, look really fluid and beautiful on the face of the person who is wearing them and who owns them. And for those of you who have naturally beautiful eyebrows, there is a small percentage who don't really need to do much. You just thank your parents. Say mom, dad, or whoever, however you can find them, just tell them 
you really appreciate it. All right, so there are different ways to shape eyebrows. There's waxing, there's threading, there's, um, there's tweezing, of course, and there is sugaring, and there is also shaving. There are people who shave their eyebrows. And then um, there is trimming in terms of, sh of shaping with scissors. And in the first session, I showed you little scissors that you can use, but they're basically scissors that you would buy at the um, drugstore or a beauty supply if you have your license. So some people ask me, waxing, threading, um, sugaring, uh, tweezing what's the best <clears throat> really it is the person who's doing the shaping that makes the difference the method really any of those methods can work really well shaving it has its has its pluses <laughs> but most mostly it's a downside because you usually have um, little dark dots if you have dark hair that show that you have to cover up that doesn't mean that you can't use like a blade if you are used to doing that but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that at home so for tweezing uh, that really doesn't affect the skin around unless you pinch your skin so tweezing is pretty great because it removes the hair and the root and then that hair is gone the root is gone but you can't get little tiny fine hairs very well with tweezing and it also takes a long time with threading again it takes the hairs out by the root and someone who's talented at tweezing or threading is going to give you a really great shape uh, so it you don't need to worry that you need to go see someone who waxes or someone who threads you just need someone who is really great at what they do who's an artist and looks at you and your eyebrows so then um we would go to sugaring and sugaring is just a slightly different method than waxing it um, uses sugar instead of a wax waxes can be hard they can be soft so it doesn't really matter what someone uses on your brows unless for some reason you're sensitive to it or you might get a breakout from waxing or from sugaring and you might then want to have threading done because threading doesn't really exfoliate the surface layer of the skin. Now, if you've got someone who's really well versed at shaping and has done this for a long time, they usually will know how to wax your brows so that you don't break out afterwards. Okay, so all of my clients kind of know that you can use high frequency, you can use isopropyl alcohol, and um, there are methods that you can use. We have a kitty here in the room, which is just fine in case you can hear her. She's a new mama, and I talked about this on the last session, but um, Lola is her name, and she had four kittens, and I was privileged enough to be there to help the first one get born, and mama was a little bit mad that's the kitty and I was a little bit terrified but she did a great job and I didn't ruin anything and then she had three more kittens over the next 12 hours it was a long time okay so back to brows so then we go to brow tinting we're just going to kind of move ahead to brow tinting right now so again if you have sensitive skin tweezing or threading might be a great solution for you or if you can find someone who knows how to use sugar or wax so that they don't um, uh, create a basically a situation where a bacteria proliferates that's within your skin and creates little bumps known as the post wax breakout all right so then brow tinting brow tinting is a big bang for your buck brow tinting colors your hairs and if you have gray hairs that is awesome because then you don't have to tweeze those out if you have a lot of really light hairs or you have light hairs mixed in with your dark hairs it creates um, more density and better fill in of your own brow hairs so having a professional do your brow tint is uh, someone who does and specializes in brows would be my recommendation however there are some hairstylists who will tint brows and use the same color as they use on your hair um, Oftentimes they don't tint a lot of eyebrows and so their method might not be quite as precise. Um, I'm not judging, they might be great at it, but in my experience, I usually am able to tint brows significantly better than um, a hairstylist or hair colorist who tints them. Again, uh, this is my opinion. 
and it is an expert opinion, but that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there who do a great job who are hair colorists. So more power to you if you can get someone who does both of those things. So what's great about brow tinting is that it covers grays, it covers the light hairs, and it lasts about four to six weeks. Okay, downsides. Downsides could be that it might fade faster than you really wish it did. It does fade naturally if you get it done by a brow artist because it's a semi-permanent color, so it just fades gradually and naturally. Now, if you do it um, in close succession, it penetrates the hair shaft a little bit more completely and the color will stay a little more consistent longer. So say if you tint your brows about every three weeks, that would be pretty ideal, as long as your artist is able to keep you at about the same color that you want to be at. And most of us who know what we're doing can do that. Now, here's a little um, well-known fact to my clients and me, and probably a lot of you if you're used to taking care of your brows. The first day or two that you have your brows tinted, they're going to look a little darker typically than they will after that. And that's because typically the color will stain the skin underneath. Now that can be ideal because it can create better density. It can also create more intensity. And sometimes your kids might say, mom, dad, what'd you do to your eyebrows? Because I definitely tint men's eyebrows as well as women's. And however you identify um, man, woman, or however LGBTQ um, it is an eyebrow hair and it gets tinted. So if you go home and you see people who normally see you and suddenly your brows are super dark, they might notice it. Um, so that's why remaining consistent, doing about every three weeks, I think is ideal. Okay, so I'm gonna check our time really quick because time flies, as I have said before, and my um, timer is not telling me what time it is. There we go, we're at 12 minutes 22. Okay, so now, we want to move into really quickly microblading. I definitely will talk about this in future sessions because it's a big deal. It's very popular right now, but I just want to dispel a couple of myths about it, um, caution you about a couple of things, but primarily let you know that it can be a really good solution. What you want to look for is you want to look for someone who's had a lot of experience and you're looking for someone who knows their colors really well and how they work with different um, skin tones. So that can be a big deal. So you want someone who's technically skilled and experienced, which means they've just done this a lot. Then you want to look at their photos. If they have Instagram or online photos, or if they even just show you photos of, um, of clients of theirs, but you want to see work that they've done because you want to look for eyebrows that are like eyebrows that you have, but also that you want to have. So if you're someone who is blonde, and you see someone who does a lot of super dark brows and you don't see really many blondes on their site, then you might want to look for someone who um, shows a lot of blonde eyebrows on their site. I can tell you from looking at a lot of my clients who have had microblading done that there are people who are really great at um, blondes and people who are really great at dark hair. I haven't yet seen anyone who is equally great at both. Now I'm sure there will be in the future because it's relatively new and there'll just be more people who have done more work. Okay, so what to watch out for is um, if you feel like you're gonna go and get your brows microbladed and then you're just gonna walk out of the door every day and your eyebrows are gonna look perfect, that is probably not going to happen. So your expectations, set your expectations. You probably are still going to need to put on a brow gel um, or something on the hairs, maybe still get your brows tinted because microblading um, affects the skin underneath the hairs. So say you've got a lot of gray hairs or you've got a lot of light hairs and you go and you want to enhance the darkness in your brows, then sometimes that light hair can actually show up even more if you've got a dark color underneath. I think you can probably imagine what I'm talking about. So that's something to pay attention to. And remember, because it's on your skin, if you have hairs that grow outside of that line, you're still going to have to address those in terms of keeping your shape intact. So you may still end up seeing your eyebrow artist the same amount as before you got your brows microbladed. 
Maybe not, but you might. Now, this can be um, something you just are aware of. It doesn't mean that you don't get a microbladed or that you do. It's just something to be aware of. And I find that a lot of people don't think about that or know about that. Okay, so then next, here's a, here, here's the obvious is that microblading lasts somewhere between you know a year or two and a little bit longer and then typically people have it redone and they do have it touched up a little bit occasionally occasionally sooner than that so if you get um hairs microbladed in or a pattern microbladed in and it's not the one you want then that is the obvious issue that's why you really want to do your homework first and you can ask someone like me or your own brow artist if they know someone in the area who's really great. And there are a couple of people in Seattle who I have seen their work and they do a great job with both blondes, like I said, with blondes and with dark hair. I haven't found one that does it, does it for both yet. Um, I'm looking though, so feel free to let me know if you find someone. Okay, so the, um, the other unknown uh, is that because microblading is relatively new, really, 10 years down the line, if you continue doing microblading and you see it as a temporary thing and 10 years later, you don't really want the same shape that you have had created, um, we don't yet know how that is going to look, what you might be able to do, or if you're still gonna be able to see that outline um, forever. We just really don't know yet. So just something to be aware of. Okay, so thank you so much. This has been really fun. Um, I am happy to get to share my expertise with you and again, my opinions as well. I look forward to hearing from you. If you wanna reach out to me, um, text or email or message me on Facebook for those of you who already have my contact info or are my clients. And if you don't, AngelaBurn.com. That's A-N-G-E-L-A-B-E-R-N. So AngelaBurn.com. You can always reach out to me there and let me know what you would like to know. So our next session is going to be uh, biggest bang for your buck and what to watch out for um, in skincare and skin treatments. Thanks for joining me. 